today I'm going to show you how to make some really fun cards. This is Lindsay, by the way, the Frugal Crafter. I'm starting my whole show differently. I don't know why. Okay, so here I use some of the um, new Zig Kiyotake clean color brush pens for... Um, for this, but I also wanted to show you over here, I swatched out, I like here, I use a Spectrum Aquas, which are these guys here, a little bit cheaper. And then here I use the um, Paintastics, which are these guys, they're made by Ben Fang. They're not really cheaper because you can't find the, the Elmer's Paintastics, they only have the Ben Fangs available. A little bit what runnier, wilder color, so if you want bolder color, these might be a good idea for you. And then here are the Zigs. So you can see, you know, use whatever you have because they're generally going to work if you have watercolor markers. If you don't, both the uh, Kiritaki Real Brush Pens and the um, um, Spectrum Aquas are available at Hallmark Scrapbook pretty cheaply. I think they have the lowest prices that I've seen, so in case you're checking out those, especially for the Spectrum Aquas, because you get more for your money as far as pens go. All right, so I've got a couple different techniques to share with you, and, the, and they both start off by embossing a design on watercolor paper. Okay, you can probably see that these embossing folders I'm going to use today are from Doris. So I'm going to show you a couple techniques on this one. I'm not going to color the entire thing because it would be very repetitive, but um, I'm going to start off by uh, using three colors, a red, an orange, and a yellow. Just approximate it with whatever markers you have. And then I'm going to do, and I find if you turn your paper so that you can kind of get the tip of your brush right along the edge, it works out really well. I did try um, kind of rubbing this with wax, like a edge of a candle wax. After I took it, like before I took it out of the embossing folder, but it didn't really provide much benefit. I'll show you that sample in a minute. Um, so, and then um, it kind of covered up some areas that I wanted to be able to color, and that wasn't really what I wanted. So, um, so but it's always good to try. When you come up with an idea, try it and see if it's going to work. Okay. So now I've got the three colors in there. Why don't I zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. And now I'm going to take a, um, just a water brush. I'm just going to make sure that it's clean. It's not. <laughs> I've got some green on there. All right, this is the Prima water brush. And I like this because you don't have to squeeze it. It con continuously feeds water. So sometimes you do want to blot it though because of that, or you might get a little too much. You can get it to fade down to really, really light. And if that's too dark up there, you can just keep working it and pulling it as you go. Now I wanted to show you here my original sample. Um, this one was done with those three colors and the water brush. This was done with just the orange and the yellow and the water brush. And this one was done with a red, orange, and yellow and a Tombow blender pen, which, oh, uh, here it is right there. And um, I'll put a link to all these if you want to check them out. Uh, but you know, you can get a different look depending on the blender that you use. You could also blot your water brush or even just use a regular brush in water and just blot it in between. So you want to do that for each of these, for every petal on every flat or pretty much. Red is the probably a trickier color to blend, but I find that as long as I go quickly, I can do a couple petals at once. You just want to try to keep that raised edge as clean as possible. Now you could also brayer over some like clear ink while it's still in the thing, while it's still in the embossing folder, and then um, and then heat emboss it. But then again, you would lose, you wouldn't be able to paint over your greenery area. And um, and I realized I really wanted to do that, so I'll show you that. Another thing you want to caution. I want to caution you about is not to over emboss. I mean, not to cram your embossing folders through your machine so that it cracks the paper. Because if that happens, your ink's going to seep through to the back. And that's not really a huge deal unless you're trying to do a one layer card or a postcard and you want to keep the back clean. So if I show you this sample, what sample was it? I'll show you a couple different samples. This one here was the one that I rubbed with wax and then I painted. And I also use the Paintastics for the background, so it was really kind of wild. But on the back you can see where my paper had cracked and the stuff seeped through. Now on this one, it was another one I was just kind of playing with earlier. Um, I made sure not to have it too tight. And look, you don't have, it's hardly any um, seepage through. So just to keep that in mind uh, when you're working. So for the background, and the, all the other blooms would be done just the same way. But for the background, I wanted to do something a little bit less, um, less bold. So what I did was I just used my marker and I kind of just skimmed it across the uh, raised design, so I was getting more concentration of ink in those areas. 
So it's almost like you were, you could also just kind of hit this with like an ink pad, like a distress ink pad, um, and get the same exact effect. So if you have a distress ink pad, you could go ahead and do that. You just want something that's going to kind of reactivate with the water, like these watercolor markers do, and I could, like they do, like the watercolor markers do, like I could use this, uh, oh, that's a nice color. Oh, you gotta be careful though, not to, to just get the edges. You just want it on the raised parts. I think that's a little dark. I'm not sure I'm liking that, but you know, do it with whatever markers you have. Or ink pad. I don't know why I couldn't, I can't really get that one to skim. That one wants to, maybe because the uh, the Zig, that's a big difference between the Spectrum Aquas and the Zigs. Is the Zigs have a have a brush bristles. They're like little tiny bristles there. And the, um, the Spectrums are a felt nib. So that's probably the, you know, that's the biggest difference right there. All right, and then I think with the blue, what I'm going to do is scribble that on a tile so I have a little bit more control because I want some blue in the sky. So let me color that out there. So see, I've just got that off on a tile there. So you, I know you won't be able to see that while I'm doing the card because I've zoomed in, but just wanted to let you know that. I can even put a little bit in the sky if I wanted to. A little stronger color. And then I'm just going to go ahead and wet the area so my colors will blend and see since I, I I have a better results if I pick up the color from my um, my tile because it will liquefy a little bit better and this is a cold press watercolor paper it's very it's quite absorbent um, I'm typically using uh, the hot press Fabriano paper for my card crafting uh, it's a little bit cheaper and it's really smooth, but I had this scrap by my cutting board, so I decided I would just go ahead and, and emboss this one. And the little, the raised areas create a nice barrier between, um, between the ink colors, so it's nice. You don't have to completely wait for something to dry before you go in with a nice color because you're going to have that fine white line. But again, this is something where, like, I'm doing it quickly here, but I really recommend that you take your time so that you don't have your ink going where you don't want it. But that's how I did the background. So that's kind of just a quick recap. And then after it dries, if I want to add more to the raised areas, this one might be dry enough that I can show you. Um, I'm probably gonna cut these up and make them into bookmarks or something anyway, so I'm not really worried about how they come out. But you can kind of go ahead and just kind of scribble over it with the edge of your brush and bring out those, um, those details again or maybe just the stems on the flowers itself or whatever but you can go in and just kind of highlight that or even with a, like a small ink pad would work really well for that too so that's how um we did this and so when it's all done this is the way it's going to look and i just embellished it with a little bit of um oops, sorry about the jiggle there uh with a little bit of scrap paper and twine and a button so that's how you do that card very easy very fun and a great way to get to know your markers okay so this other one i um i had this peacock embossing folder and i thought this is it's one of those embossing folders i don't really use these kind very often because it's it's like an image itself it's not like just a background and the same thing with the poppies but i thought this would be a really fun technique to do with this and i'm actually going to use the wink of stella brush pen i just got this from hallmark um and i'm going to go over what i think about that in a second but first i just want to go ahead and get my colors in and i'm going to use the same blue that i used on the um on the other thing, the other card in the sky. I'll get a little bit of that in the, uh, maybe just put a little bit in the tail just because I like to add the same colors around. A little bit of this nice pinky purple color. This one is um, light violet if you're following along with the Zig pens. I am really impressed with these pens, I have to say. I do like these quite a bit. Um, and I think I, what I like is the fact that it is a real brush and even when I'm, you know, when I'm done, I've got these really fine detail brushes that they're not specifically refillable. I'll probably try to refill it just to see. Um, but if nothing else, I've got some really fine tip brushes that I can use, you know, I can recycle and use in my kids glasses and they, you know, they would get a kick out of being able to use these nice fine brushes. So, you know, I certainly wouldn't toss them when I'm done. I would definitely, you know, use the detail brushes for something else. I'm going to add a little bit of this darker purple in and do a little bit of yellow. I'm not sure if that was a yellow. I think it was. I think I used the same yellow for both cards. Some yellow in the background. And this little blank area over here would actually be nice for stamping in a sentiment. 
I throw I, I glued buttons onto mine get the uh, beak area there and I think I will use green for these swirls to represent leaves now this is a little bit of a leap of faith because what we're gonna do here is actually we're going to just zap it with the um, with a spray bottle of water so any old spray bottle of water one that does like a not like a trigger spray like you would clean your windows with but like you know kind of a more of a fine mist spray will work really well all right so I'm just gonna give it a quick spritz all right and then I think I will use the water brush a little bit just to help spread my color around. I learned not to do too much water when I did the, I tried one with some gears and I had uh, some really like just earth tones and browns and stuff and I thought oh and when it was wet it looked awesome like oh this is gonna look so good because all those colors are just gonna sit in the nooks and crannies and look fantastic but then when I um when it dried it was just all kind of yuck. I'll see here it is it was just very blah when it dried. It didn't have all the cool textures that I thought it was going to have. Um, so I had way too much water on that one. I think if I'd used a little bit less, it would have looked a lot better. Okay, so now um, the next thing I want to do is actually use a Wink of Stella brush tip marker. Um, I made my own version a while back um, in the three colors that is that are offered. And they it turned out all right, I thought. And uh, but I was curious about the actual real McCoy, and so I got these. This from Hallmark Scrapbook. Um, it's got like a um, little ball bearing in there to keep it mixed up, which is nice because mine really they all it all kind of settles to the bottom, and if you don't use it very often, it um, it does not stay mixed up. And I have not used this very much, so it's kind of. It's kind of not working so well, but I'll show you side by side my homemade one next to the real McCoy. Uh, the real McCoy is, whoops, quite nice. I'm going to unscrew it there. You can refill it with your own concoction, and I'll put a link to my version. Um, and it flows really easily. You do have to squeeze it every once in a while to get it to, to flow. Whoops, I think I squeezed a little too much there. But you can see it's really sparkly. I could show you on the finished one probably a little bit better. See that? You get a really nice sparkle there. Really glittery. And my homemade version, which I have not used in months. We'll see. I better squeeze that out on something else to make sure it's going. I better rinse my tip of the brush out too because it's really stiff. So clearly... Okay, I think my homemade version might be... Yeah, my homemade version's clogged. Oh, isn't this a great video? You can see a little bit of sparkly there, but definitely not as sparkly as a store-bought. I'm gonna have to unclog that. So never mind, we're not gonna show a side-by-side -side comparison. But anyways, this is pretty cool. Um, they're a little bit expensive. These uh, brushes, I believe, are about five or six bucks. Um, they do make multi-packs which are a bit cheaper with, with a couple colors I think the clear is probably the way to go and I'm sure I'm probably not using it very elegantly um, but you can use it as a water brush if you want to liquefy your markers and add sparkle I tend to want to just kind of go over stuff just so I don't um, I, I feel like I'm gonna use less if I do that I just want to kind of grab the highlights but you know it's it's neat I, I, I kind of worry about how much product is in here though because it doesn't seem like there's that much glittery stuff but I have heard you can fill it up with water and there's enough glittery in there to um, take you to like kind of reuse it a whole get a whole like double the life of it I guess I want to say um, so I'll put a link to these two if you're interested um, from what I gathered from other crafters the clear is the one you really need because um, because you can just go over whatever color you want to do and uh, then after it's dry you can go in and add like details like I did the eye with the purple you could do you know some of the the feathers if you want you know this is kind of just one of those techniques where it looks a little different every time and just take your time because there's no need to rush I'm rushing so you don't have to sit through a video for too long but um but you know obviously when you do your own project take 
all the time you want because it's fun. Crafting is fun in it and it should be enjoyed. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and um, I want to let you know about a sponsor at my station this month. My station, I know I act all, oh, look at me, I'm fancy, I have a station um, on my channel. It is my friend Renee Christine over at richmombusiness.com. She just re-released her um, free handmade training course. She knows her stuff. She doesn't guess. She will help you improve your handmade business, whether you're an Etsy seller or you're considering opening up your own website or you're a blogger and have been thinking about selling some of your creations, she will let you know all about developing a product line and everything you need to know to sell online successfully. So check her out at freehandmadetraining.com. There's a link in the video description along with links for everything that I use today. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Leave me some love. Until next time, happy crafting.